In shocking recent soccer news, the local police have launched an investigation into an alleged confrontation between Cristiano Ronaldo and a teenage fan. At Everton, Ronaldo seemed to smack a fan's phone out of his hand, which surprised everyone in the crowd and has now become a huge controversial topic of conversation. Stick around to find out everything you need to know about the recent assault allegations against Ronaldo, along with other recent interesting soccer news that you don't want to miss. So why is Ronaldo being investigated for an alleged assault? The local police have launched an investigation into an alleged confrontation between Cristiano Ronaldo and a teen fan. On Saturday, Cristiano Ronaldo and Manchester United faced Everton at Goodison Park. When the game came to a close, Ronaldo and his teammates strolled off the field and into the tunnel. On his way, he allegedly smacked a young fan's phone out of his hand. The incident was captured on video and shared on social media, and of course, quickly went viral. During the match, Ronaldo injured his leg, and he can be seen hobbling away. After this is when the incident took place. Manchester United was defeated by a score of 1-0. Following the incident, Ronaldo apologized on Instagram a few hours after the incident. He didn't elaborate on the event, but he did invite the fan to see a game at Old Trafford as a demonstration of fair play and sportsmanship. Merseyside police confirmed soon after that they were investigating the incident and were in contact with both Manchester United and Everton. A statement was put forward by the local authorities, explaining that as the players left the field at 2.30 p.m., it was alleged that one of the away team assaulted a kid. Officers are reviewing CCTV material and conducting detailed witness interviews to determine if a crime has occurred. They are urging anyone with information on this incident to contact Merseyside Police on social media. In response to the whole ordeal, Ronaldo wrote on social media, It's never easy to deal with emotions in difficult moments, such as the one we are facing. Nevertheless, we always have to be respectful, patient, and set the example for all the youngsters who love the beautiful game. I would like to apologize for my outburst, and if possible, I would like to invite this supporter to watch a game at Old Trafford as a sign of fair play and sportsmanship, but many fans were not having it and let people know about it via social media. Next, viewers react to the alleged assault. Following the release of a video showing Cristiano Ronaldo allegedly slapping a phone from a supporter's hand, netizens were outraged and criticized the incident straight away. While some have defended the Manchester United player, others have suggested that he needs to get the supporter a new phone. Ronaldo's behavior was deemed uncalled for and awful by many internet users. However, others claimed that while Ronaldo's frustration after the defeat was understandable, it did not justify his actions. One user commented on the video saying, You have to buy him a new phone too, man. You're supposed to be an inspiration to your fans. A second user responded to the now viral clip writing, As if breaking his phone isn't bad enough, you want to force him to watch United? Additionally, in the video, people can be seen cheering, but it's certainly possible that they had no idea what was actually going on. In response to that, one user commented, Why are people applauding? You smacked a phone out of a child's hand. Another online user wrote, No one is allowed to do that to another person, especially especially a kid. He's supposed to be a role model. Yet another Twitter user shared their feelings, simply writing, That's assault, plain and simple. While the majority of fans and viewers were disgusted by his behavior, like we have stated, others stood by the soccer player's side. One Twitter user wrote, Just frustration after a loss and being hurt, and you have someone invading your space. A kid was reaching way over the barrier to record Ronaldo's injury, just an unfortunate situation. A second user seemed to agree, writing, Fans should be warned about being provocative. Don't provoke CR7 after he has lost. He's used to winning, and you can't change his personality. That's him. His reaction to a loss can be aggressive once provoked. All-time top goal scorer for club and country. Simply a GOAT. Next, Ukrainian soccer club to start peace-themed tour. A Ukrainian soccer club, Shakhtar Donetsk, has stated that they will take part in a government-sponsored event called Global Tour for Peace to collect funds for the country's troops in their country's fight against Russia. The soccer tour will also aim to collect funds for Ukrainian refugees who have been displaced as a result of the ongoing war. War. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which began back in February, soccer clubs based all around Europe have offered to play against Ukrainian clubs and host the young youth players so that they can continue to do what they love. Since mid-December, Shakhtar hasn't played a competitive match. After a Christmas break, the league leaders were set to resume the domestic season on February 26. However, Russia launched its armed invasion two days before their game against Metalis Kharkiv, and Ukrainian soccer unfortunately came to an abrupt halt. However, luckily, FIFA amended transfer rules during the war to allow players from Ukrainian clubs to sign with other clubs. Shakhtar loaned Tete to Lyon, while Junior Moraes, who got citizenship and represented Ukraine, joined Corinthians in Brazil. Despite being exiled from its native city of Donetsk in 2014, when pro-Russia separatists gained control of sections of eastern Ukraine, the club's prosperity has persisted. In recent years, the squad has been playing in Kiev. The club stated it had given 1.4 billion Ukrainian hryvnia, or $48 million, in humanitarian 
humanitarian relief to citizens as well as assistance to the armed forces of Ukraine and the Territorial Defense Force in dozens of cities and towns throughout the conflict, which is absolutely amazing, so if you can find the time to support them, we highly suggest doing so. Now, the controversy surrounding the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Finally, there is a lot of controversy surrounding the 2022 FIFA World Cup and its location. The 2022 World Cup, which will be held in Doha, Qatar, is likely to be the most contentious tournament in contemporary sport, or at the very least, soccer history. When FIFA granted the 2018 and 2022 World Cup hosting rights to Moscow and Doha respectively, controversy emerged, notably in relation to the Arab countries. The news came as no surprise, given that Australia, New Zealand, and the United States were among the other candidates for the 2022 World Championship. Writers like Kevin Howe wrote in December 2010 that the option is perplexing on a number of levels. Qatar was chosen despite the fact that the country has never qualified for a World Cup. They have never advanced past the Asian Cup quarterfinals. Another difficulty was the heat throughout the summer months. It was supposed to take place between July and August, but the heat there is unbearably high on a daily basis, which is obviously bad for the competitors and spectators. As a last resort, the World Cup was rescheduled from November to December, with the opening day set for November 21st, with the event ending on December 18th. Laws and political opinions, as Hal points out, also function as a deterrent to the crowd's full enjoyment of the games. The sale of alcohol is harshly restricted in Qatar, so fans who are expecting the customary party scene at the 2022 World Cup will probably be very disappointed. So what is the current scenario in Doha and the soccer world with less than eight months till the start of the world's largest soccer festival? Human rights organizations are among the top groups that are heavily against this event being held in Qatar. Since it was revealed over a decade ago that the World Cup would be held here in 2022, various claims have surfaced regarding how hurtful this will be for the country and the people living there. Additionally, they have continued to criticize the treatment of foreign employees, including Filipinos, in Qatar, while the country claims that the event is a catalyst for learning best practices and reforming labor laws. A Guardian expose in 2013 exposed the difficulties around human rights violations within Qatar and the lead-up to the FIFA World Cup. These human rights violations were directly linked to the excessive heat and fatal working accidents. Since the Persian Gulf country was granted the World Cup and began construction projects, 6,500 migrant labor from India, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh have died as a result. The UN also slammed Qatar for racial discrimination in 2019, claiming that a worker's nationality plays an overwhelming role in how they will be treated. Policies on homosexuality and Qatar's position on LGBTQ rights are two other hot topics. As you can see, many believe that this World Cup will do a lot more damage than good for the small country. And there you have it, everything you need to know about Ronaldo and why he's currently being investigated for assault. Additionally, we also also touched on other recent soccer news you need to know about. Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you will never miss any of our new and upcoming content. Thanks for watching.